So let's start with the external carotid artery, which you can see here highlighted in green in this lateral view of the head and neck. The external carotid artery gives some branches to the parts of the neck and supplies the external structures of the head and face. It has eight branches, which can be remembered by the mnemonic, some anatomists like freaking out, poor medical students. The first letter of these words can help you remember the name of all of those branches. We'll work through them in the following slides. The first branch of the external carotid artery is the superior thyroid artery. This artery's main target is the superior portion of the thyroid gland. It arises from the anterior surface of the external carotid artery and descends along the lateral border of the thyrohyoid muscle to reach the thyroid gland. The second branch is the ascending pharyngeal artery. It is the smallest branch of the external carotid artery. It arises from the medial surface of the external carotid artery near its base and ascends between the internal carotid artery and the pharynx to reach the base of the cranium. As its name suggests, this artery arises to supply the pharynx, as well as other nearby structures, including the soft palate. The lingual artery is the third branch of the external carotid artery. It arises anteromedially from the external carotid artery, between the superior thyroid and facial arteries. Here we can only see the beginning of the artery because it disappears deep to the hyoglossus muscle. As you may have guessed, the lingual artery supplies the intrinsic muscles of the tongue and the floor of the mouth. The fourth artery is the facial artery, which, as its name implies, supplies the muscles and skin of the face. The facial artery arises anteriorly from the external carotid in the carotid triangle. It also gives rise to branches that supply the tonsils, palate, and submandibular glands. As we can see, the out of our mnemonic is for occipital artery, which is the fifth branch of the external carotid artery. It travels towards the occiput to supply the posterior region of the scalp. We can see the beginning of the occipital artery here highlighted in green. In this image of the skull from a posterior view, we can get a better idea of its complete path. Next, we have the posterior auricular artery, arising from the external carotid artery, posterior to the ramus of the mandible. We can see the beginning of this artery here, highlighted in green. In this image, we're now looking at the left side of the face and neck, with the posterior auricular artery highlighted in green. It's travelling posteriorly around the ear. This artery supplies the adjacent musculature, the parotid gland, and parts of the ear and scalp. Almost there, we're on number seven of eight branches. The final two branches, the maxillary and superficial temporal arteries, are known as the terminal branches of the external carotid artery, as they are formed by its terminal bifurcation. Let's take a look at the maxillary branch first. The maxillary artery is the larger of the two terminal branches and has 17 branches itself. The maxillary artery enters and traverses the infratemporal fossa before terminating in the pterygopalatine fossa. Its branches supply many, many structures, including the mandible, the teeth, the masseter muscle, and the buccinator muscle. And finally, the last branch of the external carotid artery. The other terminal branch is the superficial temporal artery, we can see the beginning of this artery highlighted here in green. This artery ascends superficially along the temporal bone and terminates by dividing into the frontal and parietal branches. Because of its superficial location, the pulse of this artery can be easily palpated. It supplies the temporal region of the scalp, as you can see here in this image of the lateral view of the face and neck. So to wrap up our external carotid artery, let's just quickly review its eight branches and the mnemonic that will help us remember them all. Some anatomists like freaking out poor medical students. S for superior thyroid artery, A for ascending pharyngeal artery, L for lingual artery, F for facial artery, O for occipital artery, P for posterior auricular artery, M for maxillary artery, and S for superficial temporal artery. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles, and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. 
click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.